kumbuka kwenye safari yangu ya uhuru jambo la kwanza nilikuta mtu anamshuhudia shangazi yangu ambaye ndiye alikuwa amemwaminiwa huyu jumbe nikadhani ni muislamu fulani ambaye lakini jambo la pili ambalo nalikumbuka kwenye ujumbe ni kwamba baada ya kubatizwa niliachana mambo ya kutafuta kanisa wala kwenda kuamuru nitakao ulimwenguni miezi sita na baada ya miezi sita nilikuwa hapo fulaisha nacheza mpira ndipo mwanza kucheza kwanza nacheza mpira uwanjani nikawaza hivi nikamka hapa nikavunjika mguu ndani ananiponya hiyo ndio kwa hiyo alafu mpira ulipoisha mwanza kwa kweli mazoezi nikachukua jambo yangu nikaeka begani alafu nikatembea na waza nikasema yeye yule alikuwa ni Mungu ananiumbia kutia mawazo yangu sema hata ningekuwa najua kucheza mpira kama pele kama si uzuri mazoezini mwalimu aweza akanipanga amen alafu kuna mchezo mwingine wa kwenda mbinguni amen alafu mimi siendi mazoezini alafu nitarajie kwenda kuchukua kombe hizo habari hazipo nikasema kuanzia leo nenda kanisa bye bye ni mambo ambayo yalikuwa ni changamoto kwangu kwenye maisha yangu ya kupovu mpaka leo nayakumbuka pia huwa naamini hata watu wanaopaliza wanaondoka siku ya kujiliwa kwao Mungu amariki sile mda wenu kuna dada Hilda anasema anaumwa kwa hiyo anahitaji maombi lakini pia dada Mektrida Manoni naye anaomba maombi kwa ajili ya mama yake na kuna ndugu yetu Emmanuel ambaye ni mzamini mnamona amekaa kule nyuma anasema mgongo nauma sana kwa hiyo naye anahitaji maombi Mungu abariki basi hebu tusimame wote kwa pamoja Baba yetu wa mbinguni, Mungu wetu mpendwa na mwokozi wetu Yesu Kristo. Wewe ni Mungu wa neno lako. Ulisema kama kanisa lingeomba kwa pamoja, wewe ungesikia na ungetenda. Baba tuko mahali hapa kwa ajili ya jambo hilo Bwana. Kuomba kwa ajili ya wapendwa wetu. Kuna dada yetu ili da Bwana adui amemwotea na yeye amelala kitandani hawezi lakini pia hapa hapa kulipo kuna mtumishi wako bwana ndugu yetu Emmanuel ni mweka hazina wa kanisa hili ni sehemu ya uhumishi wa kanisa hili bwana mbele zako mfalme ni chombo chako bwana na adui amekivamia amekipiga na amekijengwa bwana hapa mbinguni lakini kuna mama kwa dada yetu mekitirida naye ni mgonjwa adui amekushambulia hivyo mungu kwa mbinguni wana wetu Yesu Kristo shetani katupa changamoto lakini si katupa tu changamoto sisi kaupa ufalme wa mbinguni changamoto baba wewe ni mungu usie shindwa katika changamoto yoyote na ndio maana ukasema katika neno lako wewe ni mungu ukisa mema yetu yote na kutuponya magonjwa yetu yote hivyo Mungu mpenzi na waleta hawa wote mikono yako nikiomba uponyaji wako nikiomba nguvu zako nikiomba kuimuli wako kutokea kwako wasamee makosa yao yote na maovu yao yote na uwaponye kwa kwa wewe ni Mungu mlia mmoja ukisema magonjwa yote ulimaanisha pamoja na haya yanayowasumbua hawa yanayomzungua ndugu yetu Emmanuel yanayomzungua dada yetu Ida yanayomzungua mama yetu mama mama dada yetu Ida ulimaanisha magonjwa hayo yote hivyo Mungu zidutisha neno lako sasa tunapokuita pepo shetani tunakukabili kwa jina la Kristo aliye hai ukikuamuru waachie hawana na binti za Mungu katika jina la Kristo aliye hai mwachie ndugu yetu Emmanuel mwachie dada yetu Ida mwachie mama wa dada yetu Ida kwa jina la Kristo aliye hai Buna mamlaka ya kuendelea kupoteza Kristo alipokuwa akipigwa walikuwa wakiponywa hivyo tunakukumbu na kukuamuru kwende kwenye kiza la nje huko kwa walioaniwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye hai asante bwana Yesu Kristo aliye hai kwa uponyaji wako na ukuu wako naomba na kuamini katika jina la Yesu Kristo amen Mungu abariki na mnaweza mkaketi kidogo
Uh, Tuliko toka redioni Tulikutana na ibada nyingine Ya ubatizo Sasa wengi ya mungu yishirika Kini bazi yenu tulishiriki Jina wane pesifa Kuna dada yetu alitokea geita Alikuja hapa Wakaongea na mchungaji mae Na wakawa mekata shauli kwenda kubatizwa Dada karibu usimame kutungia mkono Sasa jira na dadani dadani shalo kwa na mini mpaka kuchukua atuwa kuja kubatizwa Kuna mtu fulani maala fulani alikuwa kimuombea Kwa hivyo mungana na mungu kwa mungu yako Kwa mba mungu watamuinua dada yetu Hata kumfikisha kwenye kimo cha mtu mkabilifu Jina wali pesi Basi Tusimame Tumuite mudumu waje kutudumia Na kutakuwa na vipindi viwini Baada ya hiki kutakula tenda kula, kutakula hapa hapa kuna chakula kinaandaliwa huko juu Na baada ya chakula kutakuli hapa tenda kwa ajili ya kumalizia kipindi kingine cha mwisho Mungu wa bariki na uimbe tule wimbo wetu Wana nasikia kwamba, ubeti moja wa kwanza na wakati uwe mungu atakwana kuja mali hapa Wana nasikia kwa Well, I want to greet you once more in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to thank God for the blessing that He has given us to be here again. Well, I just, I just wanted to tell you that I'm very, very tired. Because uh, I've never labored like this before. Even when I was in the US, recently I was preaching in about eight churches. But I would be just preaching one service, maybe on Sunday or on Wednesday. Or, or maybe Saturday one service, Sunday one service. But since I started on the third in Nairobi, I started with two services on Sunday. And I was having a very weak body because I came when I was already tired. Yeah. <clears throat> then came to Dar es Salaam Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then came to Dodoma. The same story. Now here. So the body is now complaining, it's too tired. <laughs> so if I don't preach the afternoon service, don't blame me. 
it will be depending on how I feel. <clears throat> because not only was I preaching, but I would also pray for people the next day. And that was more taxing than a sermon. You are dealing with people's problems. You know, dealing with the demons and spirits in people. It wasn't easy. Like in Dodoma, I think I was in the office for six and a half hours. On Monday, after preaching three days. So it has been taxing a lot on my body. And I'm not a young man. I started preaching 1986. When I was a young boy. And I've been preaching up to now. So when you are above 50 years, you are no longer a young man. So the things that I used to do very easily, they are not easy anymore. If you are to know, my church home is also almost 700 people. So it's, it's a big work. And they also need me. So when you go back, you find a pile of things waiting for you. And then I have got many churches that we started. Because we also have been running a radio program for over 10 years. So there is a lot of follow-up. And the body is always under strain. I have a family. I have a wife. And five children. My youngest is 23 years old. And the oldest is 31. So I'm almost 54 years. I'm not a younger man. Sasa ninakaribia miaka 50 na ile si kijana tena. But I married early because I was doing nothing else but preaching the gospel. Na nilioa mapepo kwa sababu sikuwa na kitu chochote cha kutenda isipokuwa kuhubiri njiri tu. So that's the work. Hiyo ndio kazi. So it's been a pleasure to be here in Tanzania. So nimekuwa na furaha Sorry. It has been a pleasure to be here in Tanzania. And to Tanzania and to meet this brethren. You know, there was a pool between Mwanza and Arusha. I know some people in Arusha. And I've got some invitations from Arusha. But I knew no one in, in Mwanza. And, uh, but while I was praying about it, I felt ready to come to Mass. And my friend Kambarage wanted, wanted me to go from here to Arusha <laughs> to preach again. He's not very kind as he appears. <laughs> He wanted to carry a dead body from Tanzania back to Uganda. I said, no, I cannot preach in four churches. Four, four cities. Especially when I began in Nairobi. That would mean I would be out of you got, I will be here for about out of home for five weeks. So it's not very easy. Otherwise, may God bless you. 
I need your prayers. And God will continue to do His work. Let's stand up. Yeah, we are going to read in the book of um, Ezekiel. Chapter 36. Sura ya 36. We don't want to make some long reading here. Nataka kusoma krefu hapa. Let's begin from verse 1. Na kuanzia mstari wa kwanza. Also thou son of man prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say. Kuseme enyi milima ya Israel ilisikia ni neno la buwana. Thus says the Lord God. Because the enemy has said against you, aha. Kwa sababu adui amesema juyenu, aha. Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Na mahali panjiu pazamani pamekua petu tupamileki. There are four prophecies and said that says the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side that you might be a possession under the rest of the heathen you had you are taken up in the lips of the talkers and uh, an infamy of the people basi tabiri useme bwana mungu asema hivi kwa sababu nami kwa sababu wamefanya hivi kwa kuwa ukiwa na kumenza pande zote mpate kuwa miliki kwa mabaki ya mataifa nanyi mmeambwa uh, kwa midomo ya waongeao na kwa masingizio ya watu I think that should be enough. Now, Let us go yeah. back to the, the, the chapter, the chapter of the, the, the script, the, our main scripture in the book of First Kings. First Kings chapter twenty. We are still on verse twenty-eight. And there came a man of God and spoke unto the king of Israel and said, "Thus says the Lord." Because the Syrians have said the Lord is God of the hills, but is not God of the valleys, therefore I'll deliver all this great multitude in thee, into thine hand, and you shall know that I'm the Lord. Akaje yule mtu wa Mungu akamwambia mfalme wa Israeli akasema Bwana asema hivi kwa sababu wachapi wamesema Bwana ni Mungu wa milima wala si Mungu wa nchi tambarare basi nitawatia makutano hayo yote walio wengi mkononi mwako nanyi mtajua ya kuwa nimi Bwana. May God bless his word. Let's pray. Once more, Lord, we are here. As your children. You know better about us. And this is your word. And you've gathered your children here. With different needs in their lives. But the Bible says. That you sent your word. And you healed their diseases. We thank you because we know we are already healed. But we are just praying for the manifestation of the healing. Because the minister of Elijah just pointed us back to the finished work of Calvary. And that no man can do anything on top of it. But just to accept that it is done and believe that it is manifested. Lord, come down this day. Bless your servant, anoint your servant. Thou knowest the weakness in my body and the Lord, but you know you've gathered your children here. May you come and have your way with them. Bless them with your princes and come and anoint your servant. 
And anointed the translator also. Have your way with us, Lord. We are here in thy presence. We surrender to your perfect will. Come and deal with us in whatever way seemeth good unto thee. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Glory. You know, yesterday we were ending somewhere. Sorry. Yesterday we ended on a certain portion where we saw different cases in the Bible. You stand a little bit like here so that the mics don't flash. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm going back, you go back. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is we were looking at different characters in the Bible. We looked at Abraham, how God decided to come when things look to be impossible. And we had what the prophet said that God loves it to show his power and his glory. God loves to prove to the devil that he's greater. And God loves it when his children go through the tests that become testimonies. So that, you know, the, the, the testimony becomes itself becomes the basis of the final victory. And we majored on Elijah. We majored on Elijah because we saw that Elijah's ministry is, is reflecting this day. And how Elijah makes his guests different. So that on top of making an altar and putting their meat and firewood, he orders them to pour 12 drums of water. And the Bible says when the fire of God came down, it just leaked up the water. Have you seen fire that leaks water? It's like Water became like paraffin, like petrol. Amen. Now I can see some of you already sleeping. That's the devil. I've not yet even started preaching. So I'm a little bit strict. So if you sleep, I'll point a finger at you and raise you up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I leave you at that. So, so we are looking at this. And um, na we can even to our Lord Jesus. In How he had to wait until the storms were in the middle of the sea surrounding the boat. And that's when he came. Walking on the water. In the middle of the storm. Now, the prophet says, is in, the, in his message they ever here you are detained because he wants you to create a vacuum you create a vacuum in your heart and then you Amen. the demons are still there why are the demons still there because he worships them 
He worships because you are, you are humble looking for a job. Kwa sababu umye nyekevu ukitafuta kazi. Even in a police officer's office. Hata katika ofisi ya maafisa wa police. You cannot do this. Uwezi ukafanya hivi. But we do that in the house of God. Lakini tunafanya hivi katika nyumba ya Bwana. God is not a small puppet. Mungu si kibaraka mdogo. God is greater than any man in this world. Mungu ni mkuu kuliko yeyote katika ulimwengu huu. This is his house. And we should all humble ourselves. You remember the seraphims? Seraphims. In, in Isaiah chapter 6. They covered their face. They covered their feet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then two wings were for flying. Because God is too holy that they can even look, they can't even look at him. And that angel of his princess is here. That is the angel that brings the word. So never make it a habit to see as a boss. That's why Brother Bradham, whenever he came to, to, to discernment, he said, if you can, everybody be reverent, be reverent, be reverent. Because when you are not reverent, every demon will cast here can come to you. Kwa sababu, kila pepo, that was by the way. Now, Sasa. what was the main subject we are dealing with? Because the Syrians have said that it's a God of hills and not the God of the valley. Therefore, I'm going to prove to them. And when we come to Ezekiel, he says, because the enemy has said, uh -huh. <laughs> Have you ever had that situation? When you are in a condition, and your enemies are saying, Aha, watch at one Munguak. Aha, I'm a Patikana. Aha, I'm going to say my yemi, Mohammedian. Aha, I'm going say my yemi, Aha, I'm Aha, <laughs> I just love the Bible. <laughs> Glory be to God. Let me read it at the place again. Glory to God. You see, in verse 2 of chapter 36, 36 verse 2, it says, Thus says the Lord. That says the Lord. Because the enemy has said against you. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Amen. 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 God accepts you to come to a situation where your enemy says, uh -huh. You come to poverty, they say, You are children die, they say, uh -huh. And when you are very sick, they say, and because God has had them say that, because your enemies are rejoicing, and they think that God is so little, 
God has been overtaken by what has befallen you. They, they, they don't know that it's God is for knowledge. Whatever condition you are in, what? He wanted you to come to that condition. And then your enemies will begin to say, Aha. Aha. We shall see if she's going to survive. We shall see her God now. Aha. Aha. He has lost the job. Aha. Aha. There is problems in the marriage now. Aha. Aha. He has got cancer. Yes. Aha. Aha. He has got AIDS now. I have. Aha. There is problems in the family now. Aha. There is problems in the church. We shall see what you are going to do. All of your fellow brothers, all of your fellow brothers, they have turned against you. Let's see what's going to happen. Because they have said that God waits until they say that. God waits until it appears like it is too late. But that is not in God's language. Impossible is not in God's vocabulary. So he waits for, for Goliath for 39 days. Posting. Give me one man. Give me one moja. One man. To fight me. If he kills me, we shall be your servants. If I kill him, we shall be our servants. Give me one man. And everybody was scared. He made a step. And then Israelites went back. Yeah. Israelites went back. Yeah. He went back. Akarudi. No man could focus. They, the second day. Give me a man. I challenge you, Israelites. You claim to be the children of God. You claim that you are victorious. Give me one man who can fight me. Show me one preacher who can challenge me. Show me one child of God who can deal with me. Show me one church that can stand without me. Show me a church that I don't work there. And everybody was going behind. Was only asking for one man. And there was no one man. For 39 days. And then he says, uh -huh. You claim to have to be having God. Am I not a Philistine? And you Israelites. Am I not a proclaimed enemy to Israel? Didn't your God promise that you shall possess the gates of the enemy? I'm an enemy. Why are you going back out? Why are you not coming to possess me? God was quiet. Uh, he was quiet. 39 days. A full month and 90 days. Goliath is enjoying it. 
Am I not a Philistine? Am I not called cancer? Mimi sini naitwa saratani. Am I not called diabetes? Mimi sini naitwa kisukari. Can someone challenge me? Je kuna yeyote anayeweza kunitia changamoto? Am I not high blood pressure? Mimi si shinikizo kubwa la damu. Show me a man who can challenge me. Hebu nionyeshe mtu anayeweza kunitia changamoto. Am I not called Mr. Anibelief? Mimi si ne, mimi si yule anayeitwa Asia. Mimi a man. Hebu nipeni mtu mmoja. And it looked like there will be no man. Na ilionekana kwamba hakukuwa na yeyote. Yes. Naam. But God didn't bring a man. Lakini Mungu hakuleta mwanaume. He brought a boy. Alileta mtoto. Yes. Oh God. Alikufufu kwa Mungu. He brought a boy. Alileta mvulana. Not a giant. Sio mtu mnene. Not a powerful man. Sio mtu mwenye nguvu. Not a recognized preacher. Not a preacher that everybody knows. Not a famous one. Somebody from nowhere. With no training. With no shield. With no spear. With no sword. And then all of a sudden. Now Gafla. Goliath is surprised. There is a boy coming. And the boy, you know what? He has got a testimony. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. All these soldiers. No one had a testimony. But David had a testimony. And he told his soul. The God. The God. That killed. That gave me grace to kill a lion. And to kill a bear. That is the God. He will give me grace to kill him. That God is not God of yesterday. And God doesn't use spears. He doesn't use shields. God uses faith. I believe him. I am going to deal with Goliath. He had a testimony. Like I was preaching in Dar es A sheep, a ram. Yule kondo, mwana kondo. When it is fighting, when it is fighting, it doesn't start in the same place like a goat. A goat is the one that says, you are joking with me. We shall see who is. Because it's heavy, high-minded, proud. Kwa sababu, yeye, anakitua majivuno, I know, I know. I have experience. I've been in the message for 40 years. I did this. I've done this. That doesn't move a devil. No. A God will do this. You, you are joking with me. But a ram. It goes back. And you have a degree. You know me. I have read the Bible 20 times. I have read every message. You know me. No. Goes back. Picks the testimony. From the testimonial archive. That's how you overcome. By the word of their testimony. Not the testimony of their pastor. Not the testimony of their husband. Not the testimony of their wife. Not the testimony of their children. But your own personal testimony. And that's why God is training everyone over us. That's why all of us have been passing through tests and trials. That's why you have been sick. So that 
you get your own testimony. Yours. Because you never run over us. Must overcome. That you overcome. You are only testimony. Not somebody's testimony. So David. The only one with a testimony. Mm. Mm. David. The only one with a, a, a worshipping heart. Sawazingine tu tunaita Mungu. Many times we call upon God. But lakini is he your God? Ivi ni Mungu wako. Are you sure God is your God? Ivi una hakika kwamba Mungu ni Mungu wako? What is God? Mungu ni nini? Who is God? Mungu ni nani? Can someone tell me the answer? Kuna yeyote anayeweza kuniambia jibu? Who is God? Mungu ni nani? Oh what is God? Yes. Mungu ni nini? Miro, mm hmm. Yoni, yoni ya kwanza. Mungu ni nani? Mungu ni sifa ya chochote kinachoabudiwa. Sifa exactly. Sawa kabisa. God means an object of worship. Mungu inamaanisha kitu cha kuabudiwa. Anything worship is God. Kitu chochote unachoabudu ni Mungu. If you worship a sea, kama unaabudu bahari, is your God. Ni Mungu wako. If you worship a tree, kama unaabudu mti is your god ni mungu wako so what proves that that god is your god nini kinathibitisha kwamba huyo mungu ni mungu wako if you worship him kama unamwabudu yeye amen but if you don't worship him lakini kama umwabudu he is not your god si mungu wako amen and that's why the devil Hiyo ndiyo maana shetani is fighting worship. Anapingana na kuabudu. Praise. Sifa. Devotion. Kujitolea. Meditation. Kutafakari. Prayer. Maombi. Because that is what makes God your God. Hicho ndicho kinamfanya mungu kwa mungu wako. You from the morning up to the evening kutoka asubuhi mpaka jioni hujamwabudu yeye and you say is my god unasema ni mungu wako what proves that is your god nini kinathibitisha kwamba wewe ni mungu wako amen 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 when people are praising wakati watu wanapokuwa wakisifu for you are they doing this lakini wewe ni kama tunafanya hivi is that praise? Hiyo ni kusifu. When others are praising for you are massaging your thigh. Wakati wewe unapokuwa wengine waki 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 abu waki sifu wewe ni kama unatekeja mikono yako. Is that praise? No. Che, huko ni kusifu. Others are praising and worshiping the Lord. Wengine wana sifu na kumwambia. They are praying. Wanaomba. For you are just standing here. Lakini wewe unasimama namna hii. What makes him your God? Nini kinamfanya yeye kuwa Mungu? But when problems come. Lakini matatizo yajapo. Oh Mungu wangu. Oh hey, my God. Oh Mungu wangu. What makes him your God? Nini humfanya kuwa Mungu wako? That's why sometimes we call and it doesn't answer. Yeah. Ndio maana wakati mwingine tumuitapo hajibu. Because you are calling him as your God. Kwa sababu unamuita yeye kama Mungu. What makes him your God? Nini umfanya kuwa Mungu wako? Because you worship him. Kwa sababu unamwabudu. Praise him in the morning. Unamwabudu mwenye yeye. Praise him in the evening. Sana jioni. You are washing plates. Una una unapokuwa ukiosha. You are singing a song of praise. Una imba wimbo wa kusifu. Even when you are bathing. Hata wakati ambao you are praising you are unapembeleza mtoto wako. You are in the office. Uko ofisini. And these days you know what has happened? Na unajua siku hizi nini kimetokea? Instead of us singing Mandala ya sisi kuimba we put them our phones to sing. Tunaweka simu ziimbe 
Bible again. Recorded in music. Music iliyo recordiwa. So that music which is recorded, is it you singing? Je, huo muziki ambao umerekodiwa ni wewe ukiimba? And then you just Eh, na ndipo unaotikisa kichwa. Sometimes it's good to listen to music. Wakati mwingine haikubidi kusikiliza muziki. But music should not take away your singing. Lakini muziki usichukue mahali pako pa kuimba. You, wewe, you need to open your mouth. Inakubidi kupanua mkinywa chako. And worship your God. Na muabudu Mungu wako. You, wewe. Let me leave that. Hebu niliacha hilo. So it took Hivyo ile ile chukua a David Daudi with a testimony mwenye ushuhuda and a David na Daudi with praise akina sifa who wrote who wrote the book of Psalms nani aliandika kitabu cha Zaburi the songs nyimbo who had a guitar and all the, these instruments of music yule aliyekuwa na gitaa na hivi vyombo vyote vya muziki who invented them nani alivibuni David Daudi he even invented the keys. Na hata ndiye aliyevumbua zile nota. And he could say, na angeweza kusema, I want this particular song played by so and so. Nataka huu wimbo uchezwe na nota hii na ile. That's why when you read the book of Psalms, ndio maana unaposoma kitabu cha Zaburi, he 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 designates a certain person for a certain song. Alimweka mtu fulani kwa ajili ya wimbo fulani. I want brother so and so to sing this one. Nataka ndugu fulani na fulani aimbe wimbo huu. Because you will sing it in the way I want it to sound. Sababu yeye angeimba namna ile ile ambayo ningetaka uimbwe. I don't know whether you know what I'm talking about. Sijui kama mnajua kile ninachokizungumzia. I can show you something here in the Bible. Ninaweza nikakuonyesha kitu fulani hapa katika Biblia. Where he says. Mahali ambako anasema. In many places. Uh, he says to the chief musician Anas mzungumzie yule mwimbaji mkuu Listen here like Psalms 109 Katika Zaburi 109 says, says this is to the chief musician 109 uh, the, the introduction up there is to the chief musician We don't have an introduction You don't have it yes. but it is always there Ah hapa hatuna utangulizi lakini Hey, they will always he will always specify he will always specify mara zote hubainisha i don't want an amateur singer to sing this one sitaki mwimbaji mdogo aimbe wimbo huu i don't want a learner to sing this one sitaki mtu anayejifunza kuimba wimbo huu i want a chief one nataka yule mwimbishaji mkuu to sing this one kuimba kuimba wimbo huu kupiga wimbo huu that's the nature of david hiyo ndio asili ya david he was always thinking about how to praise god in the best way mara yote amekuwa akifikiria namna ya kumwabudu mungu kwa namna iliyo bora zaidi that's what he always was thinking about hicho ndicho mara zote akiwa anasema na kila jaribu alilopitia like the introduction to psalms 102 kama utangulizi wa zaburi 102 
are singing because you are singing casually. Kwa sababu siku hii ni kwa sababu unaimba kawaida. Because you are in church. Kwa sababu uko kanisani. And then you are kissing your baby. Na ndipo una wewe you are playing with him. Una mcheche, una mcheza naye. A particular way. Njia maalum. I want you to sing in a particular way. Nataka muimbe katika njia maalum. In a particular tune. Katika njia fulani. Katika tune fulani. Because we are singing for the highest God. Kwa sababu tunamwimbia Mungu aliyeitwa God sana. And when we are clapping. Na wakati tunapopiga makofi. Uimaanishe tunapotenga makofi. Unapopiga makofi, makofi maanisha you are not clapping for a president. Not even a minister. You are clapping for God. The very God who created the hands. If you are praying, don't just do it like a, 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 a religion. Do it from your heart. Pour your heart to God. When you are repenting, don't come and stand here and repent professionally. Oh, look who I did a B C D. I am praying for you. I do go and I am going to Samee. I am going to do and the prophet called a dry-eyed repentance. Someone with a brazen face standing on the pulpit. You are not repenting to the people. You are repenting to God. As if it's a joke. We are dealing with God. That God is the God of God. Treat it as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Live a life that is holy. Keep away yourself from the world. Separate with the world. Don't just say I'm the bride. The bride is always separated from her people. And she's taken away to the man. So you are separated from the world. And you will live with Christ, the man in heavenly places. That's why David was a type of man who was always away in the bush meditating praying as he looked after the sheep with his mystery, with his guitar he was always singing he was always praying and when the lion came he was so much in God that he never thought about himself and he went after the lion let us the David the young man of God. And he killed the lion. He killed the bear. Not as a young man. The temple of the dynamics. So today, it's not you the young man. It's not the man. It's not the old man. It's supposed to be Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in you. That's the challenge. It takes a David. Not anybody else. Because Goliath has said. Sababu, Goliath has said Give me a man. Hey. Give me a fellow man. He knew there is no giant in Israel. Alijua hapakuwa na manefili, So when he gave his challenge, he knew they are not going to find a man his match. Hakukuwa na mtu yeyote ambaye angeweza kuoana na Goliath. He knew. 
alijua he knew they didn't have such a man hawakuwa na mtu kama huyo katika israeli but he forgot lakini alisahau that the god of israel lakini mungu wa israeli is the one who created the goliath the giant ni yule ambaye aliwaunga wale aliwaunga goliath glory to god oh utukufu kwa mungu let me tell you friends hebu niwaambie marafiki cancer is just the disease that eats the cells huyo cancer huyo saratani ni Radui tu anayekula seli za mwili wako yeye ni pepo but god did just create your cells lakini mungu aliumba tu seli zako he created the whole of you alikuumba wewe mzima and he can remove the dead cells na anaweza akaomba and create new cells na akaumba seli mpya because the enemy has said kwa sababu adui amesema god gives the enemy mungu umpa adui the first chance the chance to to attack mungu humpa adui nafasi ya kushambulia that's what i want you to look at hilo ndilo nataka mtazame because the enemy has said kwa sababu adui amesema what did he say alisemaje let me read it out again hebu na nilisome hilo tena bless the be the name of the lord neno la bwana jina la bwana libarikiwe that says the lord god ezekiel ezekiel 36 verse 2 Ezekiel mstari 36 aya mstari wa 2. That say the Lord God. Bwana Mungu asema hivi. Because the enemy has said against you. Kwa sababu adui amesema juu yenu. Aha, aha. Amen. Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Na mahali pa juu pa zamani pamekuwa petu tupamiliki. I have got your peace in my hand. Nina amani yako mkononi mwangu. I have now got your husband in my hand. Nimempata sasa, nimemweka mme wako mkononi sasa. That which used to be yours. Ambaye wakati ule alikuwa ni wako. At first he was yours. Kule mwanzo alikuwa wako. Now I have got him. Lakini sasa nimempata the high places the good things i keep it as the chathamani i have got your children in my hands nitawapata watoto wako mikononi mwangu i have got your health in my hands nina nina afya yako mikononi mwangu i have got now your life nina maisha yako mikononi mwangu aha aha that was you say sorry you say unasema tell me where you are standing That's what the devil says. He says. Anasema. That in the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, the ancient high places are ours in possession. You become nostalgic you begin to 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 think about those past days and the good things that used to be the happiness unafikia mahali ambapo unaanza kukuketi na kuanza kuwazia mambo ya zamani wakati ulipokuwa mwenye furaha you begin to think how how pastors used to love one another sisi ambavyo wachungaji wa kutoka together wakiomba we used to have fellowship and then the devil has now taken that away na sasa ile ameondoa hayo yote na anakuru anakutazama na anasema aha Amina. Yeah, yeah. Now praise your God like you used to praise him. Sasa hebu msifu Mungu kama ulivyokuwa ukimwabudu hapa ukimwabudu hapa zamani. Aha. You go to church like you used to go. Hebu nenda kanisani kama ulivyokuwa ukifanya. You read the Bible like you used to read. Hebu soma Biblia kama ulivyokuwa ukisoma. You pray like you used to pray. Hebu oba kama ulivyokuwa ukiomba. You sing like you used to sing. Hebu imba kama ulivyokuwa ukiimba. Sijio sasa nimekushikilia nimekuweka mikononi mwangu. That's what the devil is saying. Hizo ndivyo shetani anavyosema. Now you are here. Sasa uko hapa. I've, I've got you under control. Nimekutawala. Sema kama wewe uko na uwezo sasa. Sema. Sema. God allows all that. Mungu anaruhusu hayo yote. Amen. And till the devil feels very comfortable that you are now under arrest. Unajua mpaka inafikia mahali ambapo ibilisi anafurahia kwamba sasa umekamata. Aha. And then he says, aha. Ndipo sasa anasema aha. You used
used to be the one making here noise that you know God. Now you say. But that's now our time. When the devil says, aha. What does he say? Anasemaje? In verse 3. Therefore prophesy and say Amen. Glory to God That's the time for you to prophesy That's the time for you to prophesy What is a prophecy? It's a that says the Lord It's a divine sanction is a divine commission that is saying something that God is saying yes and to prophesy means that you are saying something that must come to pass hallelujah, hallelujah. that's where we are now when you are in that condition when the devil says aha that is the time not to curse and weep and get broken down. Not to look for a ganga, not to look for witch doctors. That is the time to stand on your ground and prophesy. Prophesy again and let the God of Elijah come down again. The God of Malachi 4 coming down. You prophesy by doing what? By, by speaking, claiming your promises. Your promises. I claim my healing. I claim my Holy Ghost. I am claiming my children. I am claiming my husband. I am claiming my wife. I am claiming my blessings. Because the world says so. Because the enemy is laughing. Let me prophesy. When the enemy is laughing, it's not a time for you to cry. You prophesy. Don't cry. Because the devil is laughing. Because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to be so helpless until you are not able to pray. You are just crying. You don't eat. You don't even want to go to church. When you go to church, he whispers to you in the ears. Don't even see. Don't you see the problems you have left at home? You look at your children. They are not progressing. Look at your business. Look at your marriage. It's just on the rocks. Look at your ministry. You have preached and preached and preached and preached. And the church is going nowhere. Don't you think you have a problem? Now that's the preaching of the devil. And the devil is now saying, Aha. But for you as a child of God, that's the time to prophesy again. When the enemy says, Aha, God is waiting for your own prophecy. Amen. Amen. Prophesy again. Amen. And what is the prophecy? God is very unhappy with you. If you call on him with has to do a very small thing. Why should you call on God to heal headache? Just headache. For headache. Amen. 
God is not happy when you limit yourself to very small things. What are you doing? If you are married to a millionaire, and you say, buy for me one sweet. Hebu ni nunulie pipi moja. Only one, please. Oh, moja tu tafadhali. A sweet. Pipi. What about the shoes? Vipi kuhusu viyatu? What about the dress? Vipi kuhusu malirinda gari? Me, I want to buy for you a car. Mimi nataka ni kununulie gari. Mm, mm, mm. I want a handkerchief. Nataka tu uleso kitamba cha mkononi. Amen. Amen. Jesus God is love and mercy to you. Huwezi ukatosha kukausha upendo na rehema za Mungu. This what the prophet said. Hiki ndicho nabii anachosema. Amen. You say? Unasema? Well I hate to bother God so much. Sorry. I hate to bother you so much. Father I I hate to bother you so much. Na 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 chukia kukuudhi sana. Baba. Wana fikiri wana weza kumusumbu wa mungu? Kwa maombi? Kwa maitaji yako? Wana musumbu? Yo ni ibilisi ni ya kuambia yu. You are bothering God. You are disturbing God. Wana musumbu wa mungu? The devil wants to use the word disturbing, bothering to make you not pray every time. Shetani anataka kutumia neno kusumbua so that you don't pray every time. Hivi pamba huwezi kuomba kila wakati. Now listen. Hebu sikirizeni. God wants to be bothered that way. Mungu anapenda kusumbuliwa na mna hiyo. He does. Anapenda. Don't never think that you could ever ask too much of God. Mungu. Kama usiwazie kwamba unaweza kuomba sana kutoka kwa Mungu. Kuomba vitu vingi sana kutoka kwa Mungu. I believe the scripture say, ninaamini bibi eh, andiko linasema, you have not. Have. Yes. Huna, hamuna because you don't ask. Kwa sababu huna kwa sababu huombi. And you ask not. Na huombi because you don't believe. Kwa sababu huamini. Now listen. Sasa kwa script. He wants us to ask and believe that so that our joys would be full. Anataka sisi tuombe ili kwamba imani ya furaha yetu itimilizwe. He wants you to ask abundantly. Anataka uombe mengi. Ask for big things. Omba mambo makuu. Omba mambo makuu. Amen. Glory to God. Mtukufu kwa Mungu. I want to ask for a big thing. Nataka kuomba mambo makuu. What is the big thing? Mambo makubwa ni nini? You feel there. Jaza pale. The check is already signed. Hundi tayari imekwisha kusainiwa. The check is already signed. Hundi imekwisha kutayari kusainiwa. Your name is already written in there. Your name is already written. Ne, jina lako ni meandiko tayari pale. So you feel in the amount you want. Hivyo, jaza kiasi unachotaka. Can you imagine? Unaweza kufikiria. You have been given such a check. Umepewa hundi hiyo. By the richest man in the world, na mtu tajiri sana ulimwenguni, and he says, "Fill there what you want." Hebu ana kuambia, hebu jaza kiasi unachotaka, and then you put ten thousand Tanzanian cities. Nipo unajaza erufu kumi tu ya Tanzania. You are sick. Where we want to go to? Una umwa. You should have put five billion, ten billion. Ili kupasa kuweka bilioni tano kumi. The man is already signing the check. Kwa sababu tayari yule mtu amekwisha kusaini hundi. You can only put one trillion. Unaweza ukaweka trillioni moja. Pay so and so. Mlipe flana flana. Ame kuwajia fast. Feel it. Ame kuwajia na fast. And he has already signed. Na tayari amekwisha kutia saini yake. The bank is going to honor the check. Hivyo. Banki inaenda kulipa hiyo hundi. Why would you put there only 100,000? Kwa nini uweka laki moja tu? Okay. This is what he says. Hiki nditu anachosema. Ask big things. Omba mambo makubwa. Don't limit your faith now we've come to the best. Usiweke ni paka imani.
imani yako. The devil can use you to limit yourself. Shetani anaweza kukutumia wewe kujiwekea mpaka. He can preach to you. Anaweza kukuhubiria. That for you you cannot build a good house. Kama wewe usingeweza kujenga nyumba nzuri. For you. Kwako wewe. You cannot get a good man. Huwezi kumpata mwanamume mzuri. Look at how ugly you are. You are not even educated. You come from a poor family. Who is going to marry you? And then you say, "What? God is happy. Mungu anafurahi. When he finds a son or a daughter, anapompata binti au mwana, has got the faith to ask for big miracles. Alina imani kubwa kuomba mambo makubwa. Because you want to come down and use your testimony. Na kutumia ushuhuda wako. Anataka asuke chini, atumie ushuhuda yako to prove that he's God. Atakatisha kama yeye ni Mungu. He says, ask for big things. Don't limit your faith to some, some little mustard seed. God give me just something little. I like, I don't have faith for a suit. Just give me a small good, a small shirt. Ebu nipe tu shirt ndogo. A shirt ka kawaida tu. Na ka suwari ka kawaida, ka kawaida tu. And then some, some open shoe. Na hata unipe viyatu vya wazi. This one is made by the Maasai. Hivi minipe tengeneza na Maasai. So, I can also use that too. Ninaweza tu nikatumi hata hivyo. <laughs> Let me tell you this. God is not going to get glory out of that. No. He allowed you to be poor. Physically. But the Bible says he has chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith. So the rich faith will bring the rich blessings. Glory to God. Until your enemies will say, Is that John? Is that Kavina? Yes, she is. No! She is. Where did she get such good clothes? Is that the other man? Who is building that house? Is that Jackson? Yes. Where did he get the money? It's a mystery. But it's faith. Because you didn't leave it to God. Hallelujah. Don't just tell God to heal your heart. Let him heal your heart. Let him heal your legs. Let him heal the head. Let him heal everything and set you free. Glory to God. There is nothing like limiting. When, when you live to God, you are doing the devil's work. You are helping the devil. Glory to God. Believe God for everything. And let me tell you, if you have faith, faith will take care of everything. Let me tell you this. The prophet told us that faith is a master of situations. Let me give you a 
small testimony. You know when I got saved, my father chased me from home. He has never given me land. He never gave me anything. And he told me until I repent, I will never get a blessing. But finally, Amen. I refused to remain under the satisfaction of what the devil wants me to be. You have always had people. Mimi, mimi, mimi na no one can reach you. No one can reach you. No one can reach you. No Motorcycle, 
Ulinua pikipiki Ulinua pikipiki And you told the shopkeeper Na ukamwambia muzaduka I'm doing other shopping around Nina nunu, nina manunuzi hapa na hapa So you write on the receipt not taken Hebu uandike katika ile sikabali havijatukuliwa But fully paid Lakini imelipwa kamilifu So when I walk around Na ninapozunguka And I tell you I have a motorcycle Na ninakwambia ya kwamba nina pikipiki You can say you are mad Unaweza ukaniambia umechanganyika But there is seat in my pocket Lakini is the motorcycle Any time I go to the receipt They will give me a motorcycle So that receipt A mystery in my coat Bona na mshukuru mungu kumupatia Pudu mpipiki Pikipiki hiko wapi Where is the motorcycle Pikipiki hiko wapi Because he doesn't see it Lakini hayoni But fine is the evidence of things not seen is the receipt that I have hidden here but on the receipt there is a motorcycle and that's why when you have faith you already have seen your healing even when physically it's not there Others are still seeing you are still sick. But for you it's a praise the Lord I'm healed. Because you have a receipt. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is faith in God. Some of you have listened to my testimony. How many have listened to my testimony? The first motorcycle, the first bicycle I got. It was in the evening time I was praying in the house. 1992. And then I think around in November there. And then God tells me. You go to Tororo. Tororo is one of the towns in Uganda. And it's 30 kilometers away from my place. And it says you go to Tororo. And go to this office. And tell that man. That God told me. My bicycle is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I told my wife that tomorrow I'll come here with a bicycle. I hope my husband, you are not going to steal the bicycle. Because you were so poor. She knew I didn't have any money. But I told her, God has told me, there is a bicycle for me. Amen. So I footed 30 kilometers to Toronto. And then when I reached the office, I greeted the man. I said, excuse me, sir. God told me to come here. My, my bicycle is here. <laughs> And, and the man said, What is your name? Jina lako ni nani? Of course I told him. Bila shaka he said, Yes. Akasema, Nam. God told me Mungu to put so much money in the envelope. Hallelujah. And here it is on the table. I was waiting for the person to come. Oh. It was 75,000 Uganda shillings by then. And then, and I said, God bless you, thank you. I picked my envelope, I went. And bought the bicycle. And there was some balance. 
I fixed it properly. I bought some sugar. Nikadunua skari and some bread and bought some meat and nikadunua mkate nyama and I rode home. Na nikaendesha kurudi nyumbani. And then my wife sees me in the afternoon. Nipo mimi nadiona jioni wakati wa jioni with a brand new Rodmaster bicycle. Nikiwa na bicycle mpya ya Rodmaster. Surely you have come back with the bicycle. Hakika umerudi nyumbani ukiwa na bicycle. Sasa when God told me it was as good as already done. I knew I would come back with the bicycle. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 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 When God decides to do something, He wants to show His power. He just wants loyal hearts, believers that know they are God. Glory to God. Don't take anybody's word to be a description of your future. Don't take anybody's statement. Don't even take your statement of the brain. No. Take the statement of faith. And God wants you. He wants us to believe Him for big things. Actually, He's very happy. When you ask big things, this is the prophet saying, not me. He doesn't he, he ask for big things. Don't limit your faith to some little master disease. He says, God, get on out here to some other kind of faith. Leave the nominal use of faith. This little faith of you has lived. Got the real fullness of faith. Do you know? The prophet said, actually, what is in us could create another world. Should give you a good place to build a big church if there is a tomorrow. 
Ninaamini Mungu atakupa sehemu nzuri ya kujenga kanisa lako kama kuna kesho. Because this is God. Kwa sababu huyo ni Mungu. This is not to you. Hii sio wewe. It's not your work. Sio kazi yako. It's not your work. Sio kazi yako. It's not your glory. Sio ukufu wako. It's the glory of God. Sio ukufu wa Mungu. And God is happy. Na Mungu anafurahi. To do it. Kunifanya. So that these denominations. Ili kwamba madhehebu haya. Who are abusing you? Because 
they have laughed at this ministry. They have abused this ministry. They think we are lost. God had to give Goliath 39 days. But he took David uh, one hour, a few minutes, to finish that voice. To silence that voice. To silence that voice. And let me tell you, God does not permit your enemies to die. Because your enemies are your promoters. <laughs> you need it then. That's why the Bible says He will prepare a table for you before, before you are enemies. And they will sit around and look at you eating. <laughs> God has prepared a table for you. And God loves it to see your enemies around you. When you are Kulana, when you are Kudarao, the ones who say it all man of words. Hey. Just thank God the Lord. 
I know this enemy is here. I create a testimony for me. This enemy is here. Who are laughing at my calamity? They are the ones who make indirect prayers for me. When they pray that I die, I become more long life. More long living. So let me tell you this. That's why one time a sister came to me. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I have so many enemies. They abuse me. Everywhere I turn. They don't love me. All my neighbors. I said, okay, let me pray for you. I said, Lord Jesus. I pray for your daughter. I pray that, Lord, you add her more enemies. Add for her more enemies. Let them abuse her from morning to evening. And she will turn eventually to see the blessings that come with that. And then she, after prayer, she said, Pastor, what did you pray? I said, you are really blessed when you have enemies. That's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Luke chapter 26. He said, Jesus is the one saying, Yes, Woe unto you. Only when. When all men speak good of you. Wakati watu wanapo wanenea mema. Why is it a war? Ivi kweli ni one. He says because they already spoke of good about fellow prophets. Kwa sababu wali wanenea mema tu kuhusu mafalisayo. So if you want to be well spoken of, be a fellow soul. Kama wewe unataka uzungumzo vizuri, basi uwe mfarisayo. But if you are true one, lakini kama wewe ni wakweli, blessed are you, when all men, wakati watu wote, that is Matthew chapter 5 verse 11, blessed are you, blessed are you, when all men, wakati watu wote, shall separate you from their company, wataka pukutenga, and you shall say all man of evil against you falsely. And he said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Because greater is your reward. So you don't want to get a reward. You don't want heaven to be your friend. And it's no in the denomination of circles. Especially the I want the favor. Baba ni nataka. Favor, 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 favor. Ni nataka kibali, kibali, kibali. Wherever I go, mahali popote na popenda. Favor, favor, favor. Ah, kibali, kibali. When you are asking for favor, una popomba kibali. Alia, do you want the devil to send you? Una taka imbirisi akupe kibali. And you think na una zani? If the devil does not favor you, his children will favor you. Una zani kwamba yeye asipokupa kibali, una zani watoto wake watakupa kibali. So which favor? Keep on again. I need the favor of God. And where God says yes, be here, do this, get this, no man will stop it. Glory to God. Have to 
believe some of the things now. Nina, uh, nina kuwacha baadhi ya mambo sasa. He says here. Anasema hapa. And when they crossed Jordan. Na wakati walipovuka Jordan. Elijah turned around and said. Elia aligeuka na kusema. What would you do that I do to you? Unataka nikufanyie nini? And he said. Akasema. That the double portion of your spirit be upset upon. Nataka sehemu maradufu ya roho yako iwe juu yangu. And he said. Akasema. You have asked a great thing. Umeomba kitu kikuu. Now listen what the prophet says. Hebu sikiliza kile nabii anachosema. God wants us to ask for big things. Mungu anataka tuombe mambo makubwa. Can you imagine the ministry of Elijah? Unaweza kufikiria huduma ya Elia. So powerful, so yeye nguvu zito. And Elijah Elijah is asking for a double portion of that. Na Elisha anaomba sehemu maradufu ya hiyo huduma. Why should he? Kwa nini aombe? Wasn't the Elijah, Elijah ministry enough? Je, huduma ya Elia haikutosha? And you are asking a double portion? Na unaomba sehemu radufu? What was that revelation in Elijah? Huo ulikuwa ni ufunuo gani ndani ya Elia? I want Elisha. double. Ninataka maradufu. Amen. Double maradufu. And then Elijah says, "Na Elia anasema, the, the, the prophet says, "Na ne, uh, Nabi anasema, my God, Mungu wangu, he don't run out of blessings up there. Hawezi kukimbiria uh, baraka juu kule. Hawezi God can run out of blessings. Hawezi kupungukiwa na baraka huko juu. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for too much. Huwezi ukaomba mengi zaidi kuliko." Mm. Glory be to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Then when he asked a double portion. He said, akasema, you must a hard thing. Umeomba kitu kigumu. But if you see me when I go, na utakaponiona niondokapo, you will have it. Uta, uta, and when he was taken up, alipochukuliwa juu, Elisha kept his eyes on him. Elia aliendelea kumtazama and his mantle fell back. Na lile jo likadondoka chini. The double portion of the spirit came on him. Na sehemu maradufu ya roho wake ikawa juu yake. Then when he, this double portion came, na wakati sehemu maradufu iliposhuka, he went and done a double work. Alikwenda na akatenda kazi maradufu. And listen what he says. Ana hebu nisikilize anachosema. He says and that was a type of Jesus Christ. Na hiyo ilikuwa ni mfano wa Yesu Kristo. What did he say? Alisema aje? He said Alisema, the things that I do yale mambo ni atendayo shall you also mtayatenda pia. And now listen. Hebu sikilize. And more than this na zaidi ya haya shall you do mtatenda. What is more? Nini maana ya zaidi? What did Jesus mean? Yesu alimaanisha nini? In John 14:12 katika Yohana 14 the things that I do katika 12 mambo nitendayo you shall do mtayatenda. And more na more than this nyingi ya hizi hiyo ni sehemu maradufu. Seen the dead rise. And oh, sijawai kumona mfu akiinuka. You have never prayed for them. Hujia waombea. So how will they rise when you have not prayed? Wafu watafufukaje wakati ambapo hujia waombea. You are scared. Unaogopa. You don't have that faith. Una imani hiyo. You limit yourself to pray for headache. Una jiwekea mpaka kuombea tu kichwa. Bakage. Mawibi ya mgongo. But when it comes to cancer, inapokuja katika saratani, ah, pengine hiyo maneno tutaita ndugu fulani. Hiyo ni kesi ya mchungaji. What about you? Vipi kuhusu wewe? This sign shall follow them that ishara hizi zitafuatana nao how that believe ambao wanaamini. Are you a believer? Wewe ni mwaminio? Are you a believer? This sign shall follow them. 
the word. Soma neno. Share the word. Shirikisha na neno. Sing to God. Mwimbie ni Mungu. Pray together. Ombeni pamoja. Let the presence of God be in your house. Hebu ule uwepo wa Mungu uwe ndani ya nyumba yako. When the one of you is sick. Wakati mmoja wenu anapougua. Can the family. Kusanya ka hebu. Pray for that person. Hebu muombeni huyo. Lay hands on that person. Wekeni mikono mkuu. When is your child? Wakati ni mwanao. Your wife. Mkeo. Your husband. Mmeo. Pray together. God answers prayer. God doesn't have grandchildren. God doesn't have grandchildren. All of us are the children of God. What? Sis what? Sis what? Amen. Amen. Double portion. Sehem maradufu. Let me finish with this. The prophet says, Faith doesn't try. Faith doesn't try. Imani haijaribu. Amen. Amen. Mhm. Glory to God. Faith knows what it's doing. Imani inajua kile inachofanya. It knows where it stands. Inajua mahali inapesimama. And faith na imani is not just you having it. Si kuwa nayo. Wewe kuwa na imani. Lakini wewe you become faith. That's why Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? Not shall he find a church with faith. No. Shall he find Mr. Faith? A person. So faith today is not you just having faith, but you being the faith. And it's the faith of God in you. Mm. Listen, faith doesn't try. Oh, blessed be his name. Faith knows where it is standing. Faith has got big muscles. It's not small like Maira. Maybe you have some muscles, brother. Hallelujah. You have to, to make brother uh, brother Kambarake five times and he becomes a giant. Yeah. And then he begins to walk here. And that would be faith now. And you say, can you show me a man who can come and touch me? And all of us no person would dare touch a man who is five times Kambarake. Uh -huh. Faith is full of muscles, a giant. Imani iliyojami suri jitu when it is in you forget your size forget your small head your small leg faith imani knows where i stand he has got big muscles and a hairy chest na malaika manyoya ya kifuani that's a real man and when he rises up with his big muscles, everything that is contrary sits down. I love that. When the faith in you raises up, anything contrary to you sits down. 
Kina Kepitini. He lets out a scream. Sorry. He lets out a scream. He gives out a scream. Ah, and a, and a, and a panther sauti. And it sounds like a panther screaming. Yes, Imani in a chilea sauti na in a toa mlio kama bamper. Panther is an animal ah, which is like a leopard. Yes, and a kama dubu. Like a lion. Kama dumba. Ah, whoa. And everything is. Na kila kitu. The, the master is speaking. Ah, bwana you are nena. You don't need muscles. Who is Taji Missouri? You need faith. You don't need money. Who is Taji Pesa? Faith will bring the money. Imani italeta pesa. Everything else will be brought by money. Kila kitu chochote kitaletwa na pesa. I remember one time. Na kumbuka wakati mmoja. They brought a man. Walimleta mwanamme who had beaten up many Pentecostal pastors. Ambaye alikuwa amewapiga wachungaji wengi wa Pentecostal. And they brought him in a, in a double cabin car. Walimleta katika gari la double cabin. And it was after service on Sunday. Ilikuwa ni baada ya ibada ya Jumapili. And what happens? Na nini kinatukia? They had tied his hands and legs and everything. Walikuwa wamefukinga mikono na mtengi ropu. Miku pamoja na kamba. Na kila aina ya kamba. And when he said, the vehicle would shake like this. Wakati amba pangefanya hivi kama kejitikisa na mna hivi. The vehicle, the car would shake. Kwamba ile gari ringeweza kutikisika. And the way home. Ten men on that car. Wali kuwemo wanaume kumi katika gari hilo. With injuries everywhere is beaten them. Wakiwa na majeraha kila mahali alikuwa mewapiga. And the man who sent him, who sent them. Na mtu alie watuma. It was a government double company car. Ilikuwa ni gari la serikali. He was a representative in parliament. Alikuwa ni mwakirishi katika bunge. He says. Anasema. Now this man. Huyu mtu has defeated all the pastors. Ame washinda watungaji wote. He took him to the, the mental facility. Tuli mchukua kumpeleka katika hospitali ya bicha. They can't help him. Hawange weza kumsaidia. And he's too powerful to be tied. Na ni mwenye mkumu sana hawezi hata kufungu. He came to only one preacher. Now I hear he's always preaching on the radio. Hebu mchukue mtu huyu kwa muhubiri mmoja tuambaye mara zote ni memsikia kiubiri radioni. Amen. So they brought him. Hibi wali mleta. And he was like, Na ilikuwa kama. Amina. And I was just coming from the pulpit. Na ilikuwa tu ni kitoka mimbarani ni mikuwa ni kichoka sana. I say it. Nika sema. And he tied the man. Ebu mfungulie ni uyu mtu. He said, we are tired. Ibi tu mfungulie. Do you know what you are talking about, Pastor? You see all these injuries on our bodies. Do you know what you are talking about? I say, anitai him. Nika wambia, mfungulweni. So they started anitai him. Sibi wakaanza kumfungua kumfungua. And when he started like coming out. Na, alipo anza kujiona sasa, anaanza kwa chiriwa. They all ran and jumped on the vehicle and told the driver to go. Wote walikimbilia na kudukia katika gari na kumwambia driver atuondoke. Now they left me here with this man. Sasa wakaniacha mimi na huyu bwana. Like a snake. Kama nyoka. And I went. Na nikaingia. I just held his hand. Na nikamshika mkono wake. Said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and let's go to the office. Na nikamwambia katika jina la Yesu Kristo nyanyuka twende ofisini. That man would have broken every bone of my body. Unajua huyo mtu angeweza kuvunja kila mfupa wa mwili wangu. He was a giant. Alikuwa ni jina. And he had demons. Na alikuwa na mapepo. And he was looking like a snake. Na alikuwa akitazama kama nyoka. I just said, stand up. Nikasema simama. And he stood up. Na akasimama. And we walked. I said, follow me. Na tukatembea nikamwambia nifuate. Oh, and he came. Na kaje. And we entered in the office. Na tu kawa tu di pofika ofsi. I said kneel now. Ni kama biya pigo magot. And he looked at me like this. Akani kazama namna hi. 
shaking. And, and, and he knelt down. And he's having injuries everywhere. I said, I'm going to pray for you. You don't know me. So don't bring here your future. Don't bring here your issue. So I laid hands on him. And when I started praying, he let out a very terrible screamer. And he remained like a dead body. About 10 minutes. And I just came and prayed for him again. And he opened his eyes. And looked at me. He said, Sir, who are you? And where am I? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And the demons had left. And I said, follow me. And we went and sat under my mango tree. Because my, my house was just around there, the, the church. So we sat there. I said, do you know where you are? You know how you came here? I said they brought you on a vehicle. But you were too violent like they took off. I am Pastor Maira. Have you ever heard of Pastor Maira? Okay. And he was blood everywhere. And I brought some spirit and so forth and tried to work on his body. And, and, then, and then I told them to bring him some food. And I got a boda boda. I said, if they take you to such and such a place, will you reach home? Yes. But when they reached there, whoever saw him was running away. So the Boda Boda rings me. Nobody will take this man home. I said, take, because he was also a believer. I said, take him to up to his home there. They will know him. So he rode and took the man about 30 kilometers because the vehicles could not take him. And when the people saw him, everybody was making good use of his legs. And he was saying, why are you running away? And the wife came a little bit closer. My wife, why is everybody running? That was the end of the problem. You see, not by night, not by muscles which are physical. But the faith muscles can bind every demon. In a way, what the Pentecostals had failed, they had cried and fasted and fire, 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 there is still sin here. There's fire! Fire! Let the fire burn you first. Yeah. Then you become fire yourself. To burn the devil. So he says, if you understand, he screams, every jackrabbit will run, takes to its dead. It's dead. Faith is the boss. Ah, Iman in the boss. Faith is the boss. Iman in the boss. All things.
things are possible to them that believe all things kila kitu chawezekana kwa kaaminie well you say vema unasema i must i might ask god too much brother branham nina labda naweza nikamuomba sana mungu nikaomba mengi sana kwa mungu you can't ask him enough Huwezi ukamuomba yeye vya kutosha. He loves to do it for you. Anapenda kuyafanya hayo kwa ajili yako. Don't you ever think I am asking God this is too much. Usi mara usiwahi kuwasia kwamba ninamuomba Mungu sana. No. Da. I've lived to see. Nimeishi kuona in the spiritual realm katika miliki ya kiroho in the physical realm katika miliki ya kimwili god doesn't know the word impossible mungu hajui neno kutokuwezekana he doesn't know the word too much hajui neno pele sana hii ni nyingi sana ngumu sana he loves doing those things that the love the language of the world says too much anapenda kufanya mambo hayo hayo lugha ya ulimwengu inasema haiwezekani hii ni zaidi sana that is his area of operation hapo ndipo mahali pake pa kutendea kazi so don't limit him hivi usimwekee yeye mipaka is ready to work on what you want to tell him today yeye anataka kufanya tayari katika yale unayotaka umwambie yeye atende leo may god bless you let's stand up hebu mungu nakubariki tusimame Hallelujah. I come I will I do believe I'm trusting only in the Lord. Nina mwami yeye peke yake. Trusting only in Nina mwami yeye peke yake. I'm trusting only in the Lord. Nina mwami yeye peke yake. Jesus says me now. Kwamba Yesu ananiokoa sasa. I'm holy Let's pray. Na tuombe. If you want to remember the prayer. Kama unataka kukumbuka katika maombi. Why not lift up your hand? Kwa nini usinyanyue mikono yako? Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu. Yes, we are here today. Naam, tuko hapa leo. In thy house. Katika nyumba yako. You have spoken to us. Umetunenea. You show us. Umetuonyesha. Why there are enemies? Kwa nini kuna maadui? Why they always laugh at us? Kwa nini mara zote wanatucheka? Why they always say aha? Kwa nini mara zote wanasema aha? When they see us in those difficult situations. Wanapotuona kupitia katika hizo hali. You have also told us. Na lakini umetuambia. What to do? kile cha kufanya when they say aha wanaposema aha you told us umetuambia to arise tuinuke and prophesy na kutabiri and claim what belongs to us na tudai kile tulicho when the enemy says we are going to die wakati adui anaposema tutakufa we are saying no tunasema hapana i shall not die i shall live and declare the works of the lord na kutangaza matendo ya kuwa
kitu bila shaka ushindi ni wakina mmoja Tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya ndugu yetu Abraham Mahaila. Amen. Sizani kuna mmoja ambaye atasema haja nimliwa. Kila mmoja ameinuliwa kwa Mungu. Na hebu tuyaingize kazini. Amen. Ambao mlikuwa mna madhabahu ya nyumbani. Mungu amewakumbusha, Mungu amewaambia, Mungu amewaku na mkatekeleze. Kuwa na madhabahu za nyumbani. Njia ya bani pesifa. Hebu yote ambayo tumeambiwa tuyabebe mioyoni mwetu na tusiache hata moja. Sina hata mengi ya kusema, hebu tuombe kwa ajili ya kukumkana kwenda kupata chakula. Baba yetu wa mbinguni, hatuna maneno mazuri ya kutosha kwa jinsi ambavyo unatujali kwa jinsi ambavyo unatupenda na hauachi kutuelekeza kufanya vizuri zaidi. Asante Bwana tumekuwa tukikuona tangu mkutano huu umeanza utukufu ukiongezeka kutoka mwanzo kwenda juu na hivyo Mungu tunakushukuru Bwana kwamba tumekuwa na utukufu hata utukufu na tunatarajia kuwa na utukufu mwingi zaidi mbele. Baba mbinguni Mbibu tujalie mfalme tuwe wanyama wanaocheua. Tukwambia kwa nyenye wako wanyama wasiocheua ni najisi na asi hatuitaji kuhesabiwa miongoni mwa wanyama najisi hebu tukae wanyama wadhabiu jalia haya tulio yasikia tukajidhabiu kwayo na ya kwa maisha yetu nawe mtakajitumia kwa kati ya maisha yetu umetuambia kinapotokea shida au changamoto wewe unahitaji changamoto hiyo kutoa ushuhuda au kutumia ushuhuda zidi ya changamoto hiyo kuinuliwa kwa jina lako. Hivyo Mungu tupe hekima na ujasiri wa kuishi sawa na neno lako. Tunamwambia ndugu yetu ambaye ametumika mahali hapa Bwana. Ndiye Mungu Bwana kwa ajili ya siku ya mbele. Hata ameungama Bwana kwamba mwili umechoka, lakini tunashukuru Bwana kwamba wewe ni Mungu mwenye nguvu. Amen. Tunaweza kumtia Bwana. Tumekuwa na kisa kama hiki hiki kwenye ibada zilizopita juu ya ndugu yetu Ferdinand Mabruki na kumbuka alikuwa amechoka na hawezi lakini ulimtia nguvu akaweza kumalizia hiyo ile kasite na tia ndugu yetu abla nguvu akamalizie mwendo uliobakia bwana natamani kupata mengi kutoka kwako kupitia yeye bwana hebu fanya hivyo bwana baje mkufu wa jina lako tunaelekea bwana kwenye chakula tunaomba kukibariki bwana uenda tungekuwa wengi kuliko chakula chenyewe lakini tunakumbuka wakati fulani bwana ulichukua samaki wa tano ni kati ya mbili kisha watu zaidi ya tano na kuabudu Mungu yule yule wa kwenye zile nyika za Israeli bwana hebu ukikuze chakula hicho asiwepo hata mmoja atakayepungukiwa ukale na kusaza nami utafanya hivyo kwa kwa tunayaomba hayo kwa utukufu wa jina lako kupitia jina la Yesu Kristo aliye hai amen Mungu na bariki karibu kama lake samee haleluya amen bwana mmenuna eh we fly ni mulo mzito. Ni mulo kamili. Haleluya. Amen. Mungu hakosei. Amen. Ina mambo mawili. Moja, nashukuru mchungaji ameomba. Amen. Baada inayofuatia ni maombi yako. Amen. Mungu amtie nguvu. Amen. Asiye mwema. Haleluya. Amen. Kweli kwa safari hii amekuja ni vita alikuwa navyo vikali. Kwa wakati mwingine unaona baada ya ibada nimezuia kadri iwezekanavyo kuruhusu watu kuombewa. Kwa hiyo tumetoa hiyo nafasi kesho. Kwa mtu ambaye ana uhitaji binafsi, ana shida. Haleluya. Kesho saa nane, kuanzia saa nane. Kwa sababu nataka tumpe mtu kupumzika hiyo kuanzia asubuhi mpaka mchana kisha kula chakula cha jioni. Haleluya. Kwa kuanzia saa nane tutakuja hapa kanisani. 
kwa taratibu tu tutaweka taratibu nzuri pale nyuma tutapanga viti ili awe na private pale na mtu haleluya mm alafu kisha fika hapo wengine tutaweka viti huku ili usisikie anaongea kule haleluya na wewe huru lakini jambo moja ni kwamba kama utapata neema ya kuja kuona na jambo lako ujue kabisa huji kumuona mtu unakuja kumuona mtu wewe si jinania mbili ukifika pale jimwage haleluya kama una dhambi iliyofichika jimwage wewe jimwage kama ibilisa na kwambia utaaibika basi kumbuka kwamba anakudanganya kwa sababu kama imefika mahali mimi jambo langu nikawa labda nilizidi alafu nikaunguliwa mbele ya kanisa Mungu akaniambia ulizini kanisa lote limejua alafu Mungu ukanitangazia kunisamehe amen hiyo si faida amen sasa hapo ndani kaunguka ni shetani ni mimi si shetani wa maunguka eh kwa hata bibi anasema fichae zambi hatafanikiwa haleluya Kuna kuta wakati mwingine neno likipita hivi kuna kitu kinakwambia ningemuona mtumishi angeniambia jambo fulani. Amen. Haleluya. Angeniambia kitu fulani. Sasa lingine kuwachache hapa leo sikiliza ushuhuda wake kwenye YouTube na masaa sita Haleluya. Huyu dada aliyebatizwa leo ameambiwa na rafiki yake yuko Dar es Salaam Usiku mzima akasikiliza ushuhuda wake tangu anazaliwa mpaka hivi kwa masaa sita anafanya kazi geita wilaya ya mpi ile na nyangwa ni sijui na umara akachukua gari akasafiri amefika jana jioni haleluya akajiwekea akasema kwa namna hii nikishika tatunguo yake naomba Mungu nikumbuke na akapata neema akaonana naye jana usiku. Amen. Haleluya. Akapata neema akaonana naye jana usiku. Usiku huo akaamini. Haleluya. Na Mungu alimzungumzia. Kwa sababu ndugu ana kipawa cha unabii cha utupambanuzi kama nabii. Sasa simpigii debe. Lakini Daslam, Dodoma walikuwa wanajua. Na nyie hapa mnajua kwamba mtu tuliye naye sio mtu wa kawaida kama wengine na hata injili naiona sio ya kawaida kwao mimi nazungumza hapa nimemtoa mapema ili niwe na uhuru wa kuzungumza kwamba ni fursa iliyopo haleluya na huyo dada jana hiyo akawaambia yeye ni mchaga akawaambia ndugu zake kwamba Mungu amenizungumzia na nimechukua maamuzi haya mpaka nataka kubadilisha na jini sasa mama mzazi wale ni wakatoliki pure. Akamwambia, "Oh! Akamwambia lakini ndio hivyo. Sasa akamwambia lakini tunaona kaka yako ana mtoto anayesumbuliwa kila siku. Kwa nini umwambia mtumishi? Wakanipigia simu usiku. Je, tukija naweza katoka akasema njoni. Kwao wanapanda ndege toka Moshi wanafika muda simu ifuate." mwingine isiwe kwamba labda mwanza imefanyika kwa ajili ya huyo dada na familia yake kwa nini wewe usiwe sehemu ya hao kwa sababu moja ya kitu ambacho shetani anatuonea ni kusema kesho ndio kesho kesho kumbe Mungu hanaga kesho Mungu ana saizi saizi kwa hiyo tunasema saizi saizi na mwingine hapa najua hii video inarekodiwa. Amina. Na wengine jana waliangalia YouTube ile ya juzi. Lakini ilikuwa ina makosa. Kwa asubuhi mpaka usiku walipakia saa ngapi kwenye YouTube? Ikawa ya mpaka asubuhi imefikisha watazama. Yule kijana naamka na kutana na message yangu wana nilimpigia kupokea. Haleluya ilikuwa imekatwa katwa baadhi ya maeneo. Rafiki yangu alikuwa hajajua. Haleluya. Nikamwambia naomba uitoe. Ilikuwa imefikisha watazamaji kama mbili na Haleluya. Oo oh, akaitoa. Kwa oh, tunaenda kuirudia upya. Na yeye nijihakikishie kwa sababu ni kitu cha thamani hakipaswi hata punje moja ilondoke. 
Haleluya. Tumetumia gharama kumlipa huyu kuhakikisha hicho chakula kinakuwepo. Kinakuwepo. Yaani hata kama leo hujakipata lakini dunia nzima wanafuatilia. Tunashukuriwa Mungu. Haleluya. Huyo ndugu alipo hapo dunia nzima wanamfuatilia. Haleluya. Ushuhuda mdogo tu. Kuna wadada fulani wako wana, ni sijajua ni wanchi gani lakini wameenda Japani wanafanya shughuli zao mwingine yuko China wakawa wanamfuatilia YouTube kwenye mahubiri yake. Wakasema sasa mchungaji sisi Japani hakuna makanisa, China hakuna makanisa. Kwa hiyo tunachanga hela tunakunulia vifaa vya kutosha kamera za kisasa, kompyuta za kisasa kokoto tunapoenda rekodi mahubiri vizuri ukiaweka kwenye mtandao ndio sisi ndio ibada yetu. Alafu sasa kule China wameanza kutafsiri mahubiri yake kwa Kichina wanasambaza kwa Wachina. Haleluya. Kwa hiyo ndio tu. Kwa hiyo mahubiri ya jana kijana wangu ameyakamilisha. Lakini mpaka nipitie. Kwa hiyo kuanzia kesho atakuwepo. Haya jana na nini atakuwepo kwenye YouTube? Ni kushauri, ni kusihi. Ka utafute huo ushuhuda wake kwenye mtandao. Eh, Abraham Maira. Abraham Maira testimony. Okay, ingia ule mahubiri yake ni mengi. Na kama ukiweza na kuomba na na kusi. Hakikisha mahubiri yake una download card uwezavyo tumia hata gharama hutapata hasara. Kilio jana amenunua GB ya uh, flash ya GB 64. Asema nataka ni jaze humo. Haleluya. Na nikwambia sio hasara. Amina. Mungu awabariki. Lakini jambo lingine. Ndio. Mchungaji, naomba ni Haleluya. Naomba niruhusu niseme hili. Jambo lingine sisi ni watoto wa Mungu sasa tunaga uchoyo. Jina Bwana libarikiwe. Ibada ya pili hebu tuandae sadaka ya upendo. Kwamba ndugu yetu atanunua ndizi njiani. Haleluya. Na pia unanielewa. Amen. Mungu awabariki. Amen. Mengine tutasema baadaye. Kwa hiyo kesho jiandae kufike saa 8 hapa. Haleluya. Lakini uwe na jambo. Hata Mungu kwenye Isaya anasema lete hoja zenye nguvu. Zenye nguvu. Yes. Sikukatishi tamaa. Amen. Lakini kuna mwingine unaweza kukuta jambo liko kwenye uwezo wake kulimaliza, ameota ndoto anataka aje aambiwe ndoto yake na maanisha nini. Lakini kuna mwingine amekwama kweli kweli. Haleluya. Mungu awabariki. Amen. Nisamehe kwa kuchukulia ile muda wenu. Lakini kipindi kimoja kilicho mbaki hakikisha Ibilisi asikuone. Kwamba ninamaliza vizuri. Mungu awabariki. Mungu na tubariki basi tutakuwa tunafungukana kwenda kupata chakula ni sema ni ni bwana ni sema na